What's up? What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode three of the Weigh In. I'm Chan Man V, and joined here by the pound for pound best fighter in the world, Mr. F- <laughs> Mr. Mighty Mouse Demetrius Johnson. What's up, buddy? What's going on, buddy? Glad to be back. Yeah, we're happy to be back. Baby. Happy, that's right. We took, you know, obviously we did. We always do them every other week, given that UFC is just happening every other week at this point. So, uh, yeah, did you uh, catch? Did you catch the fights this weekend? Actually, by the way, at I all? did. I did. Yeah. Co- Cody Gambrand looked Ooh, absolutely fucking amazing. Good. Yeah, he fucking he's... lit lit into Thomas Almeida, man. I mean, a lot Dude. of people were going for Thomas Almeida, but man, me me Cody uh, Gambrand, we spent time with each other in Japan. Yeah, and just the way I talked to him and how his mind is focused on the getting that belt, uh, I knew it was it was easy for him to go out there and take care of business. Yeah, man, he looks solid there. And, you know, both of those guys are undefeated actually going into that match. So uh, I think we got a star in the making right here, or at least he's already, that was like his breakout fight right there. So, uh, yeah, we're going to have to see. Maybe be fighting Cruz sometime soon, or whoever wins this weekend, you know? <laughs> yeah, I like that fight. I yeah. truly like that right, fight right? against him and Cruz because yeah. he, because Cody Gambrant always stays under his feet. You know, when, when Dom is hitting, Dom's always moving and he's yep. hitting while he's moving. So mm-hmm. that's why. You never see a lot of uh, knockouts come from Dom. To where Cody No Love, he he plants his feet, he gets in that ass, and knocks him out. And he's fast as shit. His his punches <laughs> were just faster than Almeida's. <clears throat> just getting in there, right? I mean, it's just like strong punches, fast punches. I mean, that's that's uh, definitely a formula for success. Mm-hmm. Uh, but anyways, our show we're gonna be talking about UFC 199 is coming up this weekend. Actually, Demetrius is gonna be out there. He's gonna be flying out there, I think, tomorrow, right? Yep, flying out to California tomorrow to make sure our predictions are spot on to get the front row access to make sure we're doing what we are, what we're seeing on the stream is good. Yeah, okay, uh, for sure, definitely for sure. And then we got our first guest on today, first guest, Mr. Tyron Woodley's going to be joining us. Going to do a quick interview with him, see what he's up to, and maybe even get his predictions for uh, UFC 199. And hopefully in the future, we're going to have more and more guests coming on here, joining us, some fighters, personalities, whatever. It's going to be a good time. Be good to get Rampage's ass on here. Oh, good yes. thing, good thing yes. you're not females because you try to hump us. So what? I don't want to have Rampage's balls on me. Oh my god, I, I'd pay to see that. Wouldn't you guys pay to see that on stream? <laughs> Come on, I'm, totally. All right, well let's talk about some fights here. Uh, kind of do what we do, which is analyze the. We're gonna ma- analyze the main card. So definitely, there's two two co-main card, main yeah, main events. The, uh, this UFC, and uh, which one you want to start with, man? You want to start with. Uh, Cruise let's let's, Which, let's start with the lighter guys first. Let's, start, right. let's go, from, you know, one thirty-five and work our way up to the beautiful uh, what one one eighty-five. I was like, shit, is one seventy <laughs> uh, motor weight? Yeah, yeah, I think so. One seventy. Okay, so we're starting with the uh, bantamweight guys. Uh, so we got Cruz versus Faber, Dominic the Dominator Cruz versus Raya, California boy uh, Faber here. All right, generally, how you feel? I mean, you've obviously fought Dominic before. A uh, long time ago, though, at this point. So. Oh, fuck, it's just crazy to think it was five years ago. I mean, 2011? 2011? Yeah, it was yeah 2011. 2011. You know what's crazy? He's only fought like two or three times since that fight. You know, which is the, the, really rough. The, the thing about mixed martial arts people is like, you just got to be good. But at the same time, it's about being good, being healthy, mm-hmm. uh, having a great nutrition, staying, just staying healthy in the gym and being active. So unfortunately, John McCruz has had a little uh, misunfortune with the injury bug, mm-hmm. but he's back. Take it on Uriah Faber, which is his, I could say his arch nemesis. It's one to one, ladies and gentlemen. This is the fucking rubber match. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's going to be a dope fight, man. It's going to be a dope fight. I mean, this is the battle of the hair for 135. I mean, they both have great hair. <laughs> Wow, I didn't actually <laughs> see that one coming. <laughs> Does Dominic actually have that good of hair? I mean, obviously, Uriah's got his wavy California boy hair, but Dominic, he actually has nice hair. I didn't even, I never even thought that. I mean, all. I mean, Dominic's got the widow's peak, but other than that, man, his hair, he's got a fade, and he's got Dude, nice spiky got hair, windows, man. dark yeah. luscious black locks. It's good, man. And, you know, yeah. Uriah Faber, he's got his, uh, he's got his cornrows, he's got his short man hair, he's got his long California hair, so he's, he's good, man. He, he can cover every basis he wants. I'm sure if he had a fade, he'll look good, too. <laughs> oh, man, nice, nice. Yeah, this fight, you know, out of the, the two that we're covering, I mean, this, I think this is going to be the most entertaining between the, the two fights, uh, just because I think it's going to go the distance, this one. That's just my guess. I think there's going to be a lot of punishment thrown out. Uh, probably from Cruz more so than Favors. Just just because Cruz just throws a lot of punches. He's always been a volume guy. And from a speed standpoint, I think next to you, he's probably one of the like busiest movers and, and quickest guys I've seen in the UFC. 
Yeah, I agree. I mean, and the biggest thing I think with one of this fight is Dominic Cruz's movement. He's a very mm-hmm. elusive movement. That's very different. You to get, uh, it's hard to get a beat on that man. And once you get that beat on a man, he changes the beat. It's like you in a club, <laughs> yep. and you hear, California love. Come on. And he goes, one, two, three, four. That's the beat. <laughs> then all of a sudden, he just switches it up. So fucking, you know, I'm a Bobby girl. And it beats oh like one, God. two, three, four. Yeah. So that that's that's how it is against um, Dominic Cruz. Uh, but we'll see if Uriah Piper can crack that beat. Can he get a beat on Dominic Cruz to be able to uh, land that power shot he needs to? Yeah, I mean, exactly. Cruz, he's got those. It's kind of funny because he's got a he's got really narrow shoulders. You know what I mean? And his and his <laughs> arms are. I mean, his arms are down too. Like he he throws his he kind of slings his punches. So I feel like they come from yeah they come from crazy angles and many times like a lot of angles that his opponents don't see so he gets them through and that's what I mean I think from a volume standpoint he's gonna be landing a lot of shots Faber will be able to take them all that's why I think it's gonna go the distance uh, but Faber's he he's a one shot kind of guy you know what I mean and we've seen him land it I especially their first fight I remember Faber's landing a, a few one shotters and actually hurting Cruz just for a split second but. He, you know, it's about him following up. He's got to follow up with a takedown, like right after that. And if he can do that, yeah, I think he's got a shot at beating Dominic. But I don't know. We'll have to see. Why don't we break it down? We're getting to get into talking a lot about it. So, uh, <laughs> all right, let's talk about striking. All right, both of these guys, I think, have some, you know, some punching power. I would, I don't know about knockout power, but they, they both, uh, you know, they're they're not fl- swatting at flies when they're throwing punches here. So, what do you think? I give it to Dominic Cruz. I mean, with the yeah. elusive movement that he has and how he's in and out, always swinging his opponent's miss, uh, he has a great uh, combination of kicks. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I will give it to Dominic Cruz just because he has the footwork aspect of it. Uh, given the fact that, you know, your right favorite is no slouch on the on the feet either, you know. I, I believe that if anybody's going to finish this fight, it's going to be, this is my personal opinion, I think your right favorite is going to finish this fight. Really? Um, he, finished, okay. he, he finished the first fight against Cruz. Mm-hmm. Um but, you know, that's one of the beautiful things about mixed martial arts. So I give the striking ability to Dominic Cruz. All right. Uh, I'm gonna yeah, definitely going to agree with you there. I think that um, you know, he's obviously the puncher, I think, out of the two, just given that it's what his style is. He's going to be pressing the the, uh, the pace the entire time, too, just just how he is, right? It wouldn't be Dominic Cruz without that. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how his legs hold up. I feel like his last fight... Uh, against uh, Dillashaw was, you know, his legs were starting to break down. I mean, he was kicking his legs pretty hard too, though. So I don't think I don't know. If we'll see that from Fabers, but those knees, man, two ACL injuries. You never know. He's he's his movement's <laughs> got to be affected, right? If he's yeah, I, I think he's overcome it. And I think last time he said he had some type of um, itis on his foot. Mm-hmm. To where I guess golfers get a lot of time, so that's when oh. he was like wow. he would step, and then when Doshaw was kicking him, mm-hmm. that's when he had to do it. Hopefully, he learned something. Hopefully, your right people can take some from Tio Doshaw to where mm-hmm. you know cross the distance and then land that lead leg kick against Dom. Yep. But when yep. you do that against Dom, then you got to watch out for Dom's uh, wrestling. Yeah, exactly. Let's take it down in an instant. Uh, but yeah, I think I would agree with you there with the striking. It's pretty clear, actually. <laughs> I don't think it's even a question. Uh, grappling. Okay, this one's pretty interesting, actually. I give it to Uriah. Yeah, I mean, Uriah, I think so. Uriah has that that guillotine choke, and especially since you know it's it's a thing too because uh, uh, that's the name of it. Planter uh, fastest ten and nine. That's what it's called. That yep. thing on his foot. Um, but I think with Uriah with the. I think if we got in a grappling match, I mean, Uriah won the very first grappling match, mm-hmm. obviously. Yep. In Uriah's words, is that the only reason why Dominic Cruz is alive today is because the referee stopped him from choking him out. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> Essentially. It's my favorite line. He goes, this is a simulated death match. And the only reason you're oh, breathing right now is God. because I let you that, go. So, awesome. I mean, makes sense. But yeah. I have to get to Uriah's favorite. He, he's slick on the ground. He has multiple... Mm-hmm. Um, victories through his submission game, so I mean, you, you can't take that away from your right, but you got to give him the grappling. Yeah, I think most of his actually, uh, most of his wins are from submission, and um, you can't hold him down either. Like the times he gets taken down, he's up so fast because yeah. his hips are so strong, his legs are obviously the real short, stouty legs, so really powerful. It's really, really tough to actually get even any kind of top mount on him. Uh, so, grappling wise, Dominic's takedowns are great, but. I feel like just like when he was fighting you, like his takedowns, I, I feel like score him a lot of points, but don't necessarily end fights. And he's a big fucking dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah he is a big fucking dude. That's that's exactly right. Uh, but yeah, so you're right, favorite grappling. Yeah, let's. I think we agree on that one. Okay, defense. 
Yeah. Well, I mean, well, it's different. I mean, it's, there's it's, different aspects of defense here, right? Um, I agree. I agree. I, but I have to give it to um, Dominic because he's always moving. He's always changing angles. I mean, yeah, he gets hit, but he's always keeping it. I mean, Dominic Cruz's main game is his footwork. Yep. It's his footwork, moving in and out of making his opponents miss. And when he's moving some work, it's totally dedicated defense. Like, he has the same mindset as I do to where he is focused on not being hit. I'm going to hit you as many times as I can in a fight, and you're going to hit him maybe once or twice. That all caters to defense. To so where you're right, he's a little more, I, I'm going to get in your face, I, and I'm going to take these punches to land my big punch. You're right, has defense too, but when it comes to Dominic Cruz, he has the best footwork at 135. That doesn't, and he's always moving to not get hit. That's his biggest thing is he does not want to get hit. Shit, yeah. I don't want to get hit either. <laughs> I know you don't want to. You never get hit, so that's that's, that's different. Uh, yeah, I I think it's you know it's one of these things where we talked about in previous episodes, which is like there's standing defense and there's ground defense, and I think they're kind of split there. I think no doubt about it, Dominic's footwork like standing. He 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 rarely gets hit, but he gets hit more than you do for sure. And that's because I feel like he's he's in front, he's in front of them a lot more than you. You like stick stick and you're out, you know that kind of thing. I feel like Dominic lingers a little bit sometimes, and he he just uses the awkwardness of his punching sometimes just to to you know get out of situations. Um, so every once in a while he gets popped, actually pretty good. Uh, yeah. But generally, yeah, I think compared to Uriah, he's definitely the better uh, standing defensive guy. But Uriah on the ground, I still think, you know, he's better um, than Dominic. And, I mean, he's put in that situation more than Dominic is, so we mm -hmm. get to see it more. Uh, but, right, for me, it's about, it, it's it's a split for me. So I think between the two of us, we're gonna, we'll give it to Cruz. Sure, you know, let's let's split, yeah. let's give them both one. I mean, you you're uh, yeah, but it's two to oh, one, right? It's like it's, it's like one for Faber, and then we got two for Cruz, kind of thing, or one and a what? half, and, and you half. know what? But you know, they, they do have both great defense. I mean, you know, yeah. you you hit it there. Your right Faber is always moving. He doesn't, you know, we've only seen your right Faber get knocked out once. Not really knocked yeah. out, but when Hinnebra kind of drops him, he's able to uh, follow up on it. But other yeah. than that, I mean, he he does go out there and he takes some damage. But you know, it's it's a fight. You're gonna get hit. It's like going swimming. You're gonna get splashed. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Okay, uh, mental edge. All right. I mean, they're talking plenty trash to each other. As always, I guess that happens in every fight. But uh, these two got a little bit more, you know, venom between the two of them. Agreed. But at the same time, you got to look at uh, what Donald Cruz has come, c gone through to get to this point in his career. To yeah. you know, he was on top of the road at 135. He was the name, the man, the face of 135, mm -hmm. and then. Shit, hell, he suplexed me three times, yes, and then the man <laughs> goes off and has um, three ACL injuries. So That's crazy. Um, and for him to be able to come back after those three ACL injuries and beat Takei Mizugaki, finish him, and then be able mm -hmm. to go out there and, you know, that was a close fight between him and uh, Tito Doshaw, but be able mm -hmm. to capture the belt to where at the one point that, you know, I love T.J. Doshaw's style because yeah. he sits in the pocket and he throws and he and he and he not actually knocks people out. Um, to see he reminds me of Connor. He's like a little Connor almost. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. He 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 sits there. Um, so you you got to give him the mental edge. But then on the flip side, you look at your right favor. The man is. I mean, how old is your right favor? He's like thirty seven. He yeah, just turned... he's getting up there now. Uh, I don't think he's thirty seven. He's uh, let me see. I thought he was thirty seven. I know you're right. Favor just had a birthday party. He <laughs> you really? Me. Yeah, he didn't even invite me. Oh, yeah, he's, he's thirty seven. Oh, he is thirty seven. Uh, you're right. Yeah, your right favor is thirty seven years old. He's been fighting way longer than I have. I mean, I was coming home from the warehouse to get and get home to see your right favor defend his one forty five pound shot for WC. Mm -hmm. WC never die. Um, <laughs> and he's been he's fought the best of the best. Um, he's been in the game for so long. He's had multiple multiple title shots. Uh, but it is takes a very mental person to be able to stay in the game and keep on training um, to try to reach a goal. So for me, I give both these guys the mental advantage. I mean, they both have it. Pretty equal, yeah. Equal. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree with that. Um, I think that Dillashaw fight was huge for, for Cruz. Uh, I mean, both of those fights, actually. The way he... The Dillashaw fight was a tough one for Cruz. So, I mean, him getting through that and you know be, just you know, beating him, I think was a pretty big deal. But overall, yeah, I'd give the experience obviously to Faber's. Just like you said, he's been in a lot of big fights, uh, had some success. You know, been on his back a lot too. But uh, you know, he, he knows exactly what to expect from a big fight like this. Exactly, right. and, and and so I, I'm. This is one of the fights I'm most excited about uh, for this year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
It's going to be entertaining. I can't wait to see it. All right, stamina-wise, both these guys are in great shape. So I, yeah. I mean, I don't think I don't think anybody has an edge here. But they, they're they're going to go 100% the entire time. It's going to be I, I don't I don't even think we need to break this one down. I think we should give them both checks cuz yeah. they've I've never seen either one of these guys ever gas out in a fight. Mm -hmm. Um and I, I don't think you're going to see it tomorrow. So it, it, I think both checks, my friend. Yep, agreed. Okay, here's the big pick. I think we're split on this one, so this is going to be good. All right, so you picking for this fight, man? You know what? My heart, I mean, my my stylistically, I see Domino Cruz taking this fight, but my heart says, remember, Demetrius, this is mixed martial arts, and who knows? Has Uriah Faber cracked the code of Domino Cruz? Is he going to be able to get in close? throw those shots and be able to get that submission guillotine on there i mean i just feel that you know it's a fight man it is a fight but yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna have to go domino cruz like i think domino cruz is oh okay. he's on a different level but I, yeah. I i mean don't get me wrong like i can see your right favor dropping cruz and mm -hmm. snatching up a guillotine and you know try to kill him this time but uh it, i think if the fight goes to the finish i think the finish is from your right favor if the fight goes a distance, it's going to be Dominic Cruz. That's my opinion. Yep. You heard it here first. Yeah, I actually agree with the, you know if the outcome is uh, you know just a, a decision, it's going to go to Dominic. And my pick is Dominic. And the reason I think it's so is just, I think Fabers is going to land a few punches. And again, it's really about how he follows up. And I don't think he follows up very quickly. And you know, and he, he's never followed up quickly. And I don't think he's changed that at all because he's just kind of like he pops him. And then he's just like sitting there watching for a second. You know what I mean? Like he doesn't react quickly like you do, for instance. Like he, he, you he's heard him, jump you're on like a horny rooster. <laughs> exactly. And I think if you don't get him, you know, you don't get him when his back's turned a second, you're not going to get Cruz because of his footwork. Like you're never going to get him in a position where you can just, you know, take him down and be in, in that, just that, that top position. So uh, I don't see that happening. I do see very, some a few close calls. I predict a few close calls where he gets popped and he kind of gets taken down but pops up to his feet type of thing. Uh, but overall, yeah, I think it's going the distance. It's going to be awesome. Lots of punching, lots of getting hit in the face. And then uh, it's going to be a decision for Cruz. I agree, man. I yeah. agree. So we'll, we'll see what happens. I mean, I'm pumped for it. Yeah, yeah, totally, man. Okay, so that's one fight down. Good stuff, man. Good stuff. All right, now we've got the main event, or just the other co-main event, which originally was supposed to be Rockhold and Weidman, but because of an injury to Weidman, which I don't know, that it was some kind of neck injury, right? Like, was it a really bad one, or...? Yeah, he, he's been going with this uh, neck injury for a long time, yeah. uh, and it, he tried to train through it, tried to train through it, and then it never got better, and so then eventually he was like, you know what, uh, I think he ended up getting surgery about it, mm -hmm. and yep. now uh, he's feeling a lot better, so it's very unfortunate. I wanted to see that fight, too. I wanted to see freaking yeah. uh, Chris Weidman taking on um, Luke Rockhold for a rematch, but you know what, sometimes it might be better for it. Maybe it might give... Uh, Chris Weidman a chance to sit back, watch Luke Rockhold fight again, see where he can pick out the weaknesses, mm -hmm. and then be able to come back happy, healthier when he fights uh, Luke Rockhold for the second time. Or maybe you go out there and fight somebody else just to get his, you know, there's everybody always wants to rush dude, to get back to the title shot. He, Why not just take your time to that get dude back there? was obsessed, okay, with like fighting Rockhold again. So uh, I know he's he's probably he's probably gotten over it by now, but I'm sure he was really really disappointed when he. When he couldn't fight him again, and the first fight, you know, it was pretty good, just between Weidman and Rockhold. It was pretty good until he did that reverse kick, and he just got taken <laughs> down. And, and D, oh. DJ, dude, I've never seen somebody take as much punishment without a fight stopping as that fight. Like I couldn't believe her didn't stop that fight. Like literally, I've been telling you know, I just told people I was watching the fight with. I was just like, I've never seen anybody literally chop wood. <laughs> like on somebody's face <laughs> and that's what was happening to that dude so i i feel like just i, I feel like that took off like a month or two off of chris weidman's weidman's life just after taking so many huge elbows and, and punches uh yeah. but yeah I, I i would have liked to seen that fight and so we we have michael bisping obviously against uh, uh just kind of stepping in there just with uh, how many weeks? Maybe a couple weeks notice weeks? or so. I think, I think it was two weeks. Yeah, but two hey, weeks. shout out to Michael Bisping for stepping up, man. Yeah, I guess totally. a dangerous ass opponent. Yeah, and they fought not too long ago. They fought 
a year ago, maybe something like that. 2014 Australia, I think it was. Yeah, two, yeah, five years, maybe a year and a half ago. Yeah, and um, yeah. So I guess general thoughts about the fight. What do you think? You know, I like it. Um, I, I think Rocco's going to take it just because Rocco's a big dude. Um, they fought <laughs> already once before, um, especially with Michael Bisu taking on uh, the fight on two weeks' notice. And who knows? Michael Bisu might be a guy who who shines better when he is not through eight. Uh, eight week camp. Sometimes when these fighters go through eight weeks camp, like myself, mm -hmm. your body gets worn down, you're mentally drained, you just want to fight and get over with. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have to go through all that. He just goes through a two week camp, yeah. no media obligations, no press conference, two weeks of training camp, and you're right into the fight. And I, I would assume Michael Bisman is, is, is a type of guy who is always in shape. Is two weeks enough? I mean, is it? It, it depends. You know, it depends. Are you always in shape? You know, if I was to stay in shape all the time, is two weeks enough? It would be enough to get to the fight and fight. But would it be like the Demetrius Johnson that you see every time I fight? No, it won't. Just because I go through uh, a long extent of training to get my cardio where it needs to be. Right. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, so with this being, uh, you know, their previous fight, Rockhold won pretty easily. Got him in a guillotine eventually, and just pretty, you just handled him for the most part. So we're, ex I think everybody's expecting or hoping for a different type of fight. And I actually saw Weidman, some interview with Weidman yesterday, or t or maybe even early today, saying that this is going to be the easiest title defense that he's <laughs> ever seen. Like literally, this will be the easiest title defense in the UFC history. Like this fight. And then, of course, Rockhold rebuttaled with, uh, that's absolutely not true. Like, this fight's actually going to be harder than the one he would have had with Weidman because Weidman fights like an idiot, quote unquote, an idiot normally. Uh, so <laughs> that was kind Excuse of me. interesting. I can't believe you say that. The easiest title offense he's ever seen. Shame on Chris Weidman. <laughs> I mean, I have respect for Michael Bisman. I think he's going there and yeah. he can put up a great fight. But I just think when you have a man who can skateboard, surf, um, <laughs> yeah. and that athletic, and he's big. I mean, when I see fucking, what's his name, Luke Rocco next to, uh, he's bigger than Cain Velasquez height wise. Mm -hmm. He's bigger than DC. I'm almost tall as Daniel yeah. Cormier. Mm -hmm. um, and he's next to close to John Jones. He's a big fucking dude. He's a big fucking dude. And he, like you said, like he looks like an athlete. You know what I mean? He's like proportioned right. And he looks like he's just fast. Okay. When he fights, you know, I don't know if I know anybody has better question mark kick than he does. I mean, he's got that pretty ass question mark that he throws and, and just a lot of the kicks that he has. Um, but generally, yeah, he's just solid all around. And we kind of saw it in their first fight. And Bisping, he's a tough dude. He, like, he takes a lot of punishment. He'll hang in there. Uh, but he doesn't hurt people. You know, like I'm watching his, you know, I'm just serious. Like his Silva fight. I mean, I'm just, I'm just throwing it out there, man. Like his Silva fight, like if Anderson was, you know, not the whole flaky Anderson, just kind of like, I'm just here, like, almost like a sparring match type of thing. Anderson should have won that fight. Yeah. Um, you know, it's just, he's just like, I was like rewatching it, and I'm just like, he's just trying to show off his whole Filipino boxing thing. Like, if he actually wanted to win this fight, he could win this fight. Yeah. Uh, so Bisping, you know, I, I think Bisping scores points. He he typically wins decisions, but um, I don't know if, you know, he, he has any kind of power that's can, that can actually hurt Luke Rockhold. Gotcha. Yeah, we're gonna have to find out. We're gonna have yeah, to find out. Let's, let's break these fights down, bro. All right, let's go. Yeah, here we go. Striking. That's a rock hold for me. <laughs> that's nothing. Yeah, I'm gonna go to you. Too. That's, no, that's a rock no hold question, me. man. I mean, you pretty much landed on the thing when you said that question mark kick. I mean, that kick got through uh, on Bisming the first time, and then he actually finished. Uh, what what led to the finish was um, Biz uh, uh, rock hold landed that high kick, and then mm -hmm. yep. uh, get in there. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and the kicks are obviously a huge weapon for Rockhold. His punching's not too bad either. Uh, Bisping's got a nice... I mean, he's got a nice jab. He's got a nice one-two, actually. Uh, but it's not super powerful. So, going to have to give that... Yeah, just general striking to Rockhold here. Okay, grappling. Grappling, for me, goes to um, Rockhold again. I mean, Rockhold uh, submitted Tim Boach. Um, he also submitted... Uh, Michael Bisping with one arm, yep. one arm guillotine, like man on uh, mounted guillotine. That's how you have ever finished Dominic Cruz the first time I fought in the mounted guillotine. Very hard to pull off because yeah. you have to get the arm in there real deep, and you got to mm -hmm. use your back to posture up to be able to get that connection, uh, connection around the throat to be able to cut off the blood supply. Mm -hmm. So it, it's the rock hold. Rock hold is a beast on the ground, and he, actually, you guys might not know this. Rock hold. Uh, the first discipline that he came from was grappling. It wasn't stand up, but that oh, just really? how good. Yeah, his first uh, discipline was grappling. He was a grappler. 
Wow, I wouldn't have, I would not have guessed that, <laughs> given how how clean his kicks are too. Yeah, he actually submitted Machida too, I think, but before Weidman. So definitely a good grappler, and uh, gonna have to give advantage there. All right, here we go. Uh, defense. Defense. You know what? Um, it was funny. Um, I was watching the very first fight. Um, today, um, mm-hmm. before we watched the weigh-in show, and it seemed that you know Michael Bisping kind of has this clunky style, and Rocco said he has this kind of clunky style that it takes a little bit for him to get used to, mm-hmm. um, to get in there. Um, and Bisping is doing a good job to make Rocco miss and get frustrated to get in to get into range to hit him. So I think if Michael Bisping can uh, harness that and be able to let Rocco get close enough to be able to counter in, as you said, he doesn't hurt anybody. Not to hurt him, but tried to hurt him. <laughs> yeah. Or, uh, if he can get him he, down, you know, like, just, <laughs> if he can just get him down and just extend some of these rounds, then I think that'll be good for Bisping, actually. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I'm going to have to give it, uh, I mean, I mean, the defense can easily go to uh, Luke Rocco. I mean, don't get me wrong. Rocco, he, he, he keeps the distance. Um but I think Rocco's not going to keep this in this fight. Rocco's going to get in his face. Gaynor tries to have his question mark kicks. Mm-hmm. And I think you're going to see the better defense from... I don't want to say better defense. Um, I think you're going to see a lot more defense. That coming <laughs> you're going to see Bisping. a lot more defense, yeah. <laughs> I think so I'm going to give the defense to yeah. uh, Michael Bisping because he's going to need this extra check from us. And <laughs> okay. he's going to need it. Okay. Yeah, fair enough. No, I, I think you're right. You're, he's going to have to use a lot of defense, that's for sure. And generally, uh, Michael Bisping, I mean, given... He's he's generally pretty good at at um, avoiding the big shots. You know what I mean? Like he he's generally pretty good with that. Rockhold, I feel like just technically getting out of any kind of I don't know when he's pinned against the 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 cage or even just when he's on the ground. I feel like technically speaking, Rockhold's really really solid about just going from, <laughs> from, you know just from step to step. I, I think. I mean, is that right or not? Um, but generally, I think he's pretty solid there. Uh, but yeah. Uh, I would say it's a split between the two of them. So, yeah. given that you're picking Bisping, let's give him, let's give it to Bisping. That's good. All right, Man- oh. mental edge. Uh, uh, <laughs> I mean, the hardest thing to say is that you know I think Michael Bisping has been way through more. Mm-hmm. Michael Bisping has been through way more wars than Luke Rockhold has, and yeah. that's just because Luke Rockhold is a sheer beast. Uh, but I mean, to be able to get in, uh, pretty much knocked out by Anderson Silva. Mm-hmm. Uh, at the end of the round, and be able to come back and keep his wits about him. Yeah, blood elves. Yeah, uh, and, and, <laughs> and, and, and keep on going through with it. I mean, you can't take that away from him. The man's gone to the Ultimate Fighter house. Um, he's been through a lot through his career, the ups and downs. Mm-hmm. He might get a title shot, or he might not. He gets so close, 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 so close to a title shot. The next thing you know, it's way. He's been fighting for the UFC for ten years. It's a fucking decade. And he's finally getting his title shot. So, mm-hmm. um, I, I would say he has the mental edge. I mean, not saying that Rocco doesn't have it, but I just think that Michael Bisping's been through way through more through his career than Rocco has. Uh yeah, I mean, there's no question he's gone through a lot more and a lot more adversity too than Rockhold. Uh, but given that Rockhold's beat him before, you know, and, <laughs> and, and he's the champ too, you know, it's me. It's it's kind of hard not to give him the mental edge. Uh, just you know, going into the fight. Um, yeah, yeah, you know, you know, you you actually mentioned a great point. Mm-hmm. He he did beat him, so he does have that mental edge. Yeah, so absolutely right. I totally for, I totally forgot about. Um, he. I knew he beat him, but I totally forgot about that. Does give you a mental edge when you beat somebody? So, yep. see, Chairman, that's why we both we <laughs> both agreed to disagree because you just fucking caught me in act. You're absolutely right. All right, so we will give mental edge to Rockhold here. Uh, okay, stamina. All right, well, uh, stamina wise, I personally I think Bisping has has a stamina edge uh, over Rockhold. Uh, Rockle generally paces himself pretty well, so you don't really get, see him get crazy gassed or, at all at the end of matches. But I feel like Bisping can, has more volume; like he can actually throw more, you know, kick more, you know, like leg kicks and things like that, much more than Rockhold. And it's because he has more energy. So stamina wise, Bisping for me. Yeah, I I can agree, I agree with you that you know Rockhold, but. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you look back at, you know, Rocco's fights when he fought Jacques Ray back in Strike Force, when he yeah. fought uh, mm-hmm. Tim Kennedy. I mean, he was fucking throwing some leather, and he was after taking the guys down, submitting people. Mm-hmm. Um, so we just haven't seen Rocco go through a long-duration fight because mm-hmm. he's never had to. He's always been able to finish the fight. Um, yeah, his recent so I, ones have been pretty short, except it, for the wide men. It went to four, didn't it? It, it yeah. went to four, but they were both on um, antibiotics, I heard. I think they were both on antibiotics. I know oh, were they? Okay. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. And I think uh, Rockhold was on something too, uh, antibiotics, I believe. So, <laughs> okay. but let's let's go with Michael Bisman. I agree with you. I mean, he's gone through wars with Michael uh, Congoli, yeah. uh, Anderson Silva, and he seems to never slow down. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, all right. So our pick for this one, um, I think you know who I'm going to pick. <laughs> Pretty clear who I'm going to yeah, pick. I think Luke Rockhold, be, exactly. Lukey Duke. Yeah, I think Luke's got this one. Uh, I, I hope it lasts longer than a couple rounds I, I i maybe let's predict like what round do you think it's gonna i think it's gonna end in the second round yeah. i'm gonna give I, i'm gonna Me give too. him the second round i think it's when uh Rocco gets in there he's got to figure out michael bishop's quirkiness mm-hmm. and then once he figures it out he's gonna fucking nail him yeah agreed i feel like when Rocco gets you down he finishes you too so i i that, that's what i think that's gonna happen too maybe at the end of the first round but i'll give him a second round too i'll give him one round uh, you go. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's all these fights, man. They end like in one or two rounds nowadays. Like we need some epic fights. We need we we need. Uh, I think that favorite fights will be will be pretty epic. So hopefully that one will go. Favorite cruise fight will go on. All right. Well, I think uh, we're let's, done. Let's, with... let's 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 yeah. That's yeah, that's the breakdown, we're... guys. And I think let's we're get our first guest. Yeah, I think we're done with the breakdown. So we're gonna have uh, Tyron Woodley on here with us in just a second just to you know kind of catch up with him see how he's doing uh you know see what is how his upcoming training is for his fight and we're going to take a quick break and kind of get all these cameras set so hang tight we'll be right back all right guys we are back and look who we have here we've got our guest here tyron woodley t wood How's it going, man? Welcome to the show. What's up, man? Thanks for having me on, man. I appreciate it. No. This is all high tech. <laughs> it's all high tech. <laughs> oh, man, man. I ain't used to that. But man, you're from the UFC, man. You should be like used to all kinds of high tech podcasts and shit like that, right? Yeah, don't fool yourself. <laughs> don't fool yourself. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh, okay. Well, man. anyways, thank yeah. Thanks for coming on, man. So this you're our first guest, so uh, really just want to catch up with you, uh, just how how training's going, and you know, obviously you had a big long break, you know, since you know, kind of your last fight. So uh, how's everything going, man? Man, everything's going great, man. You know, um, I've had a break from fighting, but I haven't had a break from training. A lot of times, mm-hmm. I'll have a training camp fight take a break, try to do a film. Um, you know, I've never grown in between the fight, not since shit, my first couple of fights. So mm-hmm. now it's to the point where I had that time to actually grow, um, not only as a fighter, but just as a man. You know, I, w- I read a couple of books that really changed my mindset, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, mm-hmm. some investment books. You know, I really had everything thought through the wrong way. You know, re- MMA is great, but it's not my life. DJ's life, it's a big part of our life, but it's, there's other things that we want to do in life, and the reason why we do MMA is to provide for our family. And mm-hmm. uh, you know, I, I just think a little differently, and I think that's going to make me a wiser fighter. Yeah, I know. That's that's definitely great. I mean, definitely maturing as a you know human being is obviously a, a huge part of everyone's life. So uh, you know, it's good. Maybe it's just a blessing, right, that you had this time to do this, do so. Yeah, you know, I was, um, you know, DJ, I tell you, man, I, I have my hands in a little bit of everything, and sometimes it took away from the fight, and I was, I was, I was a grinder and a hustler when it came down to the sponsorships, and the, I was doing the podcast, I was doing TV shows, mm-hmm. I was running the gym, I was doing so many things, and it's a blessing that I've been able to still have some success in MMA, but I can only think that if I gave the opportunity to focus 100% on fighting, that I would have had this belt that I'm going to get July 30th a long time ago. So now, you know, take, take, taking the words of wisdom from my homie, and um, you know, I, I'm still doing some of those things, but I've cleaned my plate up quite a bit. Yeah. Well, I, I think it's good that you did some of those things, man, because you never know. You're, you're always bringing out revenue. I mean, as you know, and everybody else uh, else out there who are professional athletes, you only get paid when you go out to perform. So, I mean, the last time you were supposed to fight was in Johnny Hendricks um, in Texas, right? Was it Texas or where the hell was that at? Uh, whoops, I think we might have lost him. Oh, we might have lost, lost him. him. Yeah. Stay, stay close, ladies and gentlemen. We might have lost him. We're calling right back. <laughs> Don't go anywhere. Shit like this happens. Yeah. Don't worry. It's cool. Oh, it's good old Skype. All right, oh. boom. Is that oh, me? That was you. Know shame on you. Yeah. Oops. Shame, shame, I know shame, shame. I, was, I didn't know if I was Skyping out. You know what's funny is I actually did a test run before you guys called me just so I can make sure that this wouldn't happen, but you know. Right. Uh this is Skype. Skype's kinda weird sometimes, so uh mm. But uh what were you saying, Mike? Uh, you we were talking about your last fight, right? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're talking about his last fight. He's kind of dark, so I didn't know if uh, anybody could see him. Yeah. With, with the screen being dark and him being black, it's kind of hard. <laughs> oh, I know my God. how that goes. That's, <laughs> no, no, that's, that's, that's not him. It. It's not him. It. It's not him. It. It's not it. it's not it. let, me, let, me, let me turn it up. It's Skype. What about Skype's, that? Skype's acting a little crazy. No, it's all good. It's good. I'll fix it. I'll see, fix I, it. I can come out here, but it's a gym, and people might see me, want to take pictures and talk. No, it's all good. It's all good. That's okay. That's better good. now? Yeah, it's good. It's good. Perfect. It's good. There we go. Okay, so, um, but, you know, last time you were supposed to fight was uh, Johnny Hendricks. You went through the whole process. I mean, I flew down to Texas to watch you fight Johnny Hendricks. You went through the whole process of, of getting your weight on, on point, and you even showed up and you even weighed in yeah. that night. I was like, you know what, fucking he ain't going to make weight, then I'm still going to get paid, I'm going to eat. But, you know, walk me, t talk, tell the people why you went through that whole process to make weight, jump on the scale, and to let the people know that you were here and you're for serious and you want that motherfucking title shot. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, I appreciate your support as well for coming down and check out that fire. I was really fucking bummed when I, I was like, man, he came all the way down here, you know, and I didn't even fight. I was, I actually had Dan Bilzerian coming out the corner of me. He was firing <laughs> up his jet, man. I called him like, like I didn't even call my wife. Joe Silva called me and I called him. I said, hey, man. Are you in there? If not, <laughs> stop because I'm not fighting. So, so it was a lot of emotions going on. You know, the main thing that was a gift and a curse is that it took a long time for me to basically figure out the Rubik's Cube for Johnny Hendricks. Johnny Hendricks is not an easy fighter to prepare for. Mm -hmm. He has a wrestling ability. He has the ability to put, potentially stop me from taking him down. He has a ton of power. He's shown that even late in fights, when he, you know, he's willing to take punches. He had a lot of grit. It took me all the way up until the week before to really feel like, you know what? I got this motherfucker figured out. I got his, <laughs> I got his number. And I didn't have to show those skills. I didn't have to show the game plan. So I have this, you know, if this bout comes around another time, Mm -hmm. I, I feel like the same game plan can apply. And some of the same things that I was working on for him, we just picked up where we left off because him and Robbie, minus the wrestling, fought a lot alike. They stand in front of each other. You punch me, I punch you. You punch me, I punch you. And, mm -hmm. you know, let's see who drops to the ground first. Mm -hmm. I think that it was a blessing in disguise that I didn't have to show that. I got paid as if I fought. And, um, you know, I, I just kept it moving. Yep, ain't, ain't wrong with that. When you show up to a fight, you ain't even got to fight, and you get paid for that. that. That sounds fantastic. So you got your next fight scheduled, UFC 201, the main event. I'm going to call the main event behind you and try to open the, 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 the lights up so you go out there and get your belt. So you're taking on Robbie Lawler. How do you feel about it? Like, how, how's everything going? I'm, I'm sure camp's going good. You're at Duke Rufus's, uh, Duke Rufus Sport. Um, how's everything going uh, as of right now? Man, it's going great, to be honest. You know, I got a great start. You know, I'm doing something that I really don't like doing, which is a lot of running. And, you, know, <laughs> uh, you know, it's not cross country. Some people don't remember that, you know, or damn triathlon. triathlon. But um, it's something that's a name. Uh, rounds to have more effective rounds. That freeze again? No, you're good. Yeah, keep, keep going. going. Keep, keep going. going. Oh, keep no, going. Shit, I thought I was close. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you know, I've, I've been doing it like that, and, I, and like today we sparred today, and you know it's my first day sparring, <laughs> sparring here, and these guys are you know fighting five round fights, and they got a fight coming up a month before mine. It was just rewarding to outdo them today, and I'm gonna put mm. my boy Biggie, Biggie Mike Biggie Rose out there. He right next to me, but I wore his ass out today, and he was sitting, <laughs> he was sitting on the side of the mat soaking. I said, "What you soaking for?" Because I took you down and you couldn't get up. So you know, I'm in a good spot, and I'm, I'm excited for this fight. Nice, man. Uh, damn it, I had a uh, question off the top of my head, but it totally slipped. Uh, is, is Anthony Pettis out there training with you right now, too? Yeah, yeah, he's out here. He was out here earlier today training, um, getting it in. So, you know, he, <clears throat> me and him, surprisingly, for him to be the weight that he is and the weight that I am, we train quite a bit together. Sometimes I'm like, damn, why you want to train with me? Because you like, lighter and you moving too much. You're doing all this crazy shit. You're too fast. And, you know, <laughs> sometimes you want that bigger, heavier, slower guy. And then, but he gets in there, and he has no issue with sparring with anybody in any way, which um, which probably makes him really versatile. That's what's up, man. Okay, we're gonna take a question from the chat. Right, Adrizzo cool. one two three says, Tyron Willie, what is your favorite video game? This is Twitch, so we gotta talk about yes. video games a little bit. What's your favorite video game? Uh, Tyron? Okay, my favorite video All game, right, I wanna say, is Call of Duty Ghost, but I'm not good at it. I didn't say I was good at it. You're not really good. Game. It's just what you like. So, man. so what I do is, <laughs> yeah. I take it, I put it on local play. Yeah. I create my bots and I make them weak as hell. I put them on all recruit mm -hmm. and then I give I give myself like four friendly bots and I make them weak too so they don't steal my kills. And then it's like four of them. <laughs> there you go. Just, there you go. It's like four of them 
and it's like 12 <clears throat> enemy bots, so then I can just get like triple kills and shit. So that's the way I get up it's to 20 a- 30. AI yeah. deathmatch, man. That's what it is. That's hey, good stuff. Man. <laughs> that game, that game, you don't get better by playing. Like certain things in life, you keep doing it, you get better at it. You keep playing that game, you're gonna keep getting your ass killed by a ten year old online. So, so I don't even try to play online. I just, I just create my atmosphere and have fun. Yeah, if you play on Xbox, you'll be hearing about it too. <laughs> like, yeah. I've heard about it. Believe me. <laughs> good stuff, man. Good stuff. All right, Call of Duty. Yeah, there's a lot of Call of Duty. You ever, you ever watch Twitch at all? Or, uh, yeah, you no, know, actually, I got on Twitch because of DJ and Rampage. So yeah. Rampage was, yeah. uh, Rampage was playing with my character um, when they did that first um, <laughs> UFC? release yeah. of the EA Sport Two. So he was kicking some butt with me, and I knew DJ was on there. So I got on Twitch because of you, brothers. Mm, I ain't, I ain't the biggest gaming, um, gaming expert out there, but I will get on the headphone and talk some stuff. I, I had this ten year old sniping everybody, right? <laughs> Uh, kill like when I say like like why are you this good in this game? Then I said, man, don't you got to go to school? <laughs> this kid's like, don't you supposed to be at work? And then he shoots me again, so I laugh and I'm like, all right, I'm off this shit. <laughs> man, okay. you should you should hop on this stuff, then, man. Just just pop on to Call of Duty and stream it, man. You yeah. Create your own channel, <laughs> dude. That'd be you awesome. You know what? I should. Do- <laughs> it's like bowling and karaoke. If you're really good is fun. If you're really bad is fun. It doesn't <laughs> That's right. That's <laughs> right, man. That's cool. Um, I I think a lot of people got confused in the Twitch chat. Uh, Tom really doesn't have a, a streaming yeah, channel yet, doesn't. but when he does get his first streaming channel, we will let you guys know that it is. So, T Wood, I'm pretty sure you've seen. Uh, the video of you s- snubbing me during a handshake in Las Vegas. <laughs> no. you, had a, <laughs> you had a little bubbly, uh, uh, and it went viral. Can you explain to me why you leave me hanging like that? Hmm? Why'd you do that to me? Hey, hey, you know what's funny is that I didn't plan to leave you hanging. And as we know, I drink <laughs> once a year. And that was around that time. I once was a, bit a lit, year? And you were reaching out for the shake, and I didn't know it until the last minute. So, <laughs> Dude, that should be a, is that a meme now? That should be a total meme on Reddit. That oh, handshake. It went, it went, hey, it went viral. Uh, it did went viral for a second. That's true. We're gonna have to get a meme in the chat, man. Definitely link that in the chat, somebody. Stop That's chat. good stuff, man. Good the stuff. handshake. Never that happened. <laughs> the handshake. The mi- it came in at the end, though. We did get the handshake down at the end. That's oh, good. For show. That's good. Um, let me think. Uh, let me see if there's any more questions in the chat. Easy. What is the biggest rematch that y'all think is in the UFC? The UFC should book. What do you think the rematch? That should happen. That the UFC should book T Wood. I think they should. Um, hey, you know what is it? Real good. They sh- they should rematch um, Hell versus Nah. Oh, really? Who? Yeah, you ever seen Hell, Hell versus, Hell versus Nah. 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 Oh my gosh! Hell, Hell, nah. like, I'm tired, Hell? I'm tired of these damn rematches. <laughs> <laughs> Your ass lose, yeah. you lose. Oh, come back. Oh my god. <laughs> come back another day. If you lose. Hey, sometimes it's the judge's fault. Sometimes it's your fault. Sometimes you lost and you thought you won. I ain't never been issued no immediate rematch just because. <laughs> uh, when, you said, when you said hell and nah, I was like, <laughs> hell I, I, know. I was like, wait, wait. Are these Dude, fighters I don't know about? Name is hell. Oh, my God. Hell <laughs> versus nah. That's what I want to see. <laughs> oh, fuck, man. That's awesome, T-Wood. Well, T-Wood, thank you so much for coming on the show, man. Is there anything you want to tell uh, the fans and Twitch uh, you want to plug? You guys going to know uh, Tom Willie really has his own podcast. It's called These Nuts. See, well, go ahead. You got the spotlight, brother. Go ahead, let the world and Twitch know what you about. Yeah, you know, if you guys, you know, like podcasts, we like to shake it up. We got my man DJ on there. We got pretty much the who's who of mixed martial art. But we yeah. also have uh, actors, professional football players, analysts. Yeah. So we try to do things a little bit different. You can go on um, SoundCloud as well as iTunes. It's called The Morning Wood Show with These Nuts. Um, that's pretty much <laughs> that's all I'm plugging these days because, you know, we're killing it with that. And as far as listenership, we're up there with every other podcast yeah. that have been around for years and years, and we're only on 28 episodes. So thanks for the guys that, you know, produced that. My homie, Dean Thomas, mm-hmm. which I'll be seeing very soon. So, um, you know, it's a blessing in disguise. Absolutely, man. And before we let you go, um, what are your picks for UFC 199? You know, yeah. who do you got winning out of Cruz and Favor. Rockhold, those two fights? And yeah. Faber. Uh, I, I got I – got, um, I got uh, Luke Rockhold for the main event. I think he's just a very tough matchup. Mm-hmm. He's technically violent, 
Don't because I'm gonna use that again on Fox. I'm doing the, I'm doing the UFC Fox when you hear me say that. First time say, oh, here he though, said, man. First he time said here. that on Twitch. So he's he's technically violent, man. He he knows what he's doing and he puts yeah. it there with you know with, with cruel intentions. I think Dominique um Cruz should pull this fight out as long as he stays at long range. And his timing on his shots from the strikes is very immaculate. And if he does that, he's gonna be in good shape against Shariah. If he just shoots in and shoot in, he might get that guillotine choke again. So I'm going to take Cruz in that fight. And then, um, you know, I'm really excited about this freaking Ricardo Lamas versus um, yeah, Holloway. Max Holloway. Not yeah. a lot of people talking about that fight. That's a big fight. I'm pumped to watch that one. And, um, you know, it should be a good card over uh, Hector Lombard versus Dan Henderson. So, I mean, it's, it's a lot of good fights on the card. Yeah. Damn. Um, Straight from T with the Exactly, with man. <laughs> well, yeah, appreciate it, T Wood, man. You're the best. Actually, no worries, we, should, we should just wrap up. We should wrap up, my What do you think? Yeah, I mean, T. Wood, thank you so much for coming on the show, man. I truly appreciate it, man. Uh, I wanted you to be the first guest, the new and new and UFC World to Wait of the World, Tyman, the chosen one, Woolley. You got DJ Buff. I've been here. waiting so long to hear that, man. <laughs> I'm going to flip out when they give me that belt. I'm going I'm to be screaming around, shouting, hallelujah. Uh, I'm going to do that old missionary Baptist church shout. All right, okay, you got, okay, wait, all right, so we need to determine what your victory dance is here. Are you going to be sitting on the cage? What are you going to do? Right when you win. Hey, I'm going to flip. I don't know what You're I'm going to do. Are you gonna 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 flip? Are you going to actually flip? I'm not going to do a backflip. I'm going I'm to flip out because it's been so long, man. It's like it's so much politics and so much stuff going into this. Like, yeah. I just want to get through this fight. I want to do the least amount of media as possible. Right. I want to just focus on the fight. And after this fight, then I'll start talking a little crap because guess what? I might get some pay-per-view now. You know, I ain't get, I ain't get, I ain't gonna talk crap for oh. no reason. Oh <laughs> so, yeah, um, that's right, okay. man. That's well, right. Thank you, T. Wood. We will see you out there at UFC 201 in yep. Georgia, Atlanta, brother. Thank you so much for coming on the show. We love to have you back on again. All right, definitely, man. Appreciate it, guys. Have a good right. night. Yeah, thanks, sure. buddy. All right, peace. All wow, right. good stuff, man. He's all. Aw- he's awesome. Yeah, yeah he's what a what a what a ball of joy. <laughs> what a ball. <laughs> oh man hold on let me let me switch this over real quick oh dude he cracks me up yeah he does man Oops. yeah i i think Oops. that went smooth man yeah. um I, i'm i'm very excited to hear what the fans and the people in the twitch chat have to say about this episode about how it went with um t wood yeah i hold on a second let me fix this cam real quick it oh man this is why <laughs> that's why i hate using skype uh, but yeah, I think they, from what I could tell from the Twitch chat is that, um, they, they freaking loved him. I agree. I mean, T Wood's hilarious, dude. I like his, I didn't realize this podcast, the 90s podcast was D's nuts, dude. Yes. That yeah. is freaking brilliant, dude. Mm-hmm. Morning Wood, D's nuts. Holy smokes, dude. <laughs> Somebody's got marketing down for sure. Okay, here we go. Sorry. All right, we can end with maybe a couple questions. What do you think? Yeah, we end with that, and then I try to let's we can try to get one game of mm-hmm. uh, yeah, we, Overwatch. We, we Overwatch. Try to game. Yeah. yeah, we try to. Yeah. Uh, so, man, what a great time with Tamer Willie. Like I said, guys, we are looking forward to hear hearing what you guys thought about the show. I mean, it was our yeah. very first guest. I mean, we mm-hmm. can get a range of anybody. You know, I was already talking to Chan Man about possibly even getting Air Hawani on here. Yes, um, that would be amazing. Yes. So, I mean, the sky's the limit. Make sure if you guys like the channel, go give Chan Man V a follow on his stream. Yeah, also, hit man. the follow if you're new to my stream. And uh, we're going to keep it rolling, man. So, we'll take a couple uh, questions in the chat. We'll keep an eye on it. But other than that, Chan Man, I mean, did you think today went successful? Oh, yeah, man. I think it went great. I think, uh, again, like a Tyrone Ty was awesome. Uh, just getting a chance to, you know, just go through the motions of having a guest on uh, is just part of a show, just kind of maturing and, and you know, getting going. Uh, sounds like he's going to be, you know, he's getting prepped up, kind of really fat, you know, just kind of tighten things up for his fight, which is, it sounds really great. And I, th- I think overall the fights this weekend are going to be good. So it's always a pleasure, man, hanging out with you and getting a chance to talk, talk some UFC and just all everybody that's, you know, just tuning in too, because you know, we, I, I just like, 
tweeted it out like tonight. So didn't do the best job of letting you guys know beforehand. But we still got a few hundred people watching. It's always great. And then you know we'll obviously have uh, our audio podcasts and and vods out there for everybody to watch. So spread the word, guys. You know on Twitch, you know there's a lot of UFC people. That's the that's the reason why we want to start the show. It's just because there's a lot of people in in gaming that that love UFC too, and they're just kind of scattered everywhere. So trying to bring them all in, you know, just into DJ stream or just even for the show. So uh, yeah, spread the word, guys. Yeah, absolutely. And Angry Fight fan, we don't know who um, – you have to connect with Chan Man V yeah. who does the graphics for the show, but hit up mm -hmm. Chan Man V. Uh, we saw uh, a question. Uh, what about the return of Dan Henderson? You know, I totally forgot that Dan Henderson is fighting Hector Lombard. That's why yeah. this card is so amazing. When we got uh, Ricardo Lombard taking on uh, Max, Max Holly, Holly, a fellow streamer. Mm -hmm. I didn't even – I totally forgot they were fighting too. So, I mean, <laughs> just that right there, that just showed you how fucking stacked this card is. But the return of Henderson – Hopefully he could do good. I mean, his last two fights got knocked the hell out by uh, um, Peter Yeah, Buffett. he didn't so look too good, honestly, his last two fights. But, uh, you know, we all know the old Dan. We all have this Dan, you know, just the epic Dan Henderson in our in our heads. Just these, these uh, some of the best, actually, fights of all time have involved <laughs> Dan Henderson. So uh, hopefully he can get back to somewhere close to that Dan Henderson. But it should be a good fight regardless. Uh, oh. There's a few even... Let's see the yeah definitely the the Lamas Holloway fight's good even the Green fight's really good too, or even the the Brian Ortega versus Clay Guida. Mm -hmm, yeah. uh, Coop Diddy, I see that that's a great question. I think I have Brian Ortega submitting uh, Clay Guida. His grappling is on a whole different level. Obviously, mm -hmm. he's got to get past uh, Clay Guida's uh, caveman hair. Mm -hmm. uh, but I see uh, Ortega taking that fight. He uh, Ortega surprised me when he fought. Uh, What's his name? Uh, Diego Brandown. When he submitted Diego Brandown in the third round, I was like, yeah. perfect. He, he's going to win the fight. <laughs> Good stuff. So, yeah, tune in, guys. Tune in to UFC 199 this weekend. And, you know, hopefully your picks will be. Or, I know a lot of people bet on the fights, too. So, hopefully your picks will be the ones that are right. And hopefully our picks will help you help you uh, assess like what what uh, fights you should be picking for this weekend yes uh, and, and, and if our picks are right and you guys made those picks <laughs> based off our picks make sure you use some of that money subscribe to my channel also <laughs> yeah, that's channel. right that's um, right we, we can have bets here yeah whoever's <laughs> most right you can subscribe to that person's channel how about that exactly. <laughs> how about, that sounds good to me man totally absolutely good. But wait did we, we pick the same people this time though so it's like uh, <laughs> 50, 50, 50, exactly, 50, 50. <laughs> totally. uh, All right, well, let's. Uh, I guess let's just wrap up the show, and then we can get to playing some Overwatch with everybody. Uh, yeah, I, th I think we're gonna do like you know this kind of champion V army versus the Mighty Mouse army, and, and play maybe one or two games of Overwatch. Yes, uh, but but yeah, let's just wrap up the show real quick. Uh, Mighty Mouse, want to do some shout outs before we go? Yeah, uh, shout out to Chan Man V once again for making this happen. Uh, yeah. Truly appreciate you taking the time out of your life to uh, oh, get yeah. the overlay set up and a Skype and all that stuff. I know it's hard. And thank you to Tyrone Woolley, uh, yeah. UFC welterweight contender, taking on Robert Lawler for UFC 201 as the main event. And thank you to all you beautiful people in the chat for joining the stream. Thank you to Twitch for allowing us to be able to do this, yeah. put us on the front page to spread the name. And make sure you guys follow us on Twitter, the UFC weigh-in show. Um, follow me on Twitter and also follow uh, Chairman as well on Twitch mostly. Don't worry about Twitter. Follow us on Twitch. <laughs> follow us on Twitch. That's right. Uh, yeah, and I want to thank you too, Mighty Mouse. This is just a lot of fun. Every time we do the show, it's just like easy, easy and a lot of fun. Getting a chance to talk about fighting and and everything. Uh, and also thank you to everybody else for watching the show. And again, yeah, if you can follow us on Twitter, the show actually has a Twitter too. It's at the way in GG. Uh, and to find out only about things about the way in, it's good to follow that that uh, channel. And then again, this show is available on iTunes and Google Play and Stitcher and just all the various other places if you watch any of my other shows. So uh, definitely leave a review. If you like the show, leave a five star review and you know comments. If you don't, don't worry about. It. Just ignore what I just said. You know that sort of thing. But it helps the show a lot. You know you don't have to necessarily give anything, but just doing that for free is, is uh, something amazing for the show too. Uh, but that's going to be it, guys. So for Mighty Mouse and myself, Chan Man V, we'll, we're going to be right back, but we'll see you for now. And then we'll flip the, the stream just so that Mighty Mouse will do you know his kind of thing with his stream. And then I'll, I'll go and do my thing. So I'll be streaming too at the same time. But until maybe one or two weeks until the next UFC fight, we will see you later. Absolutely. Thanks, guys. Peace.